I'm Andrew Neenaber, and I'm directing Carmen here at Opera Idaho. Uh, and I want to tell you a little bit about the production and about my take on the production. Um, when I was asked to do this production, the first thing I said was, uh, I want to make sure that you understand that if I'm going to do this show, uh, I'm going to do some things to try to update it and make it a little more palatable for modern sensibilities. Um, the problem, two big problems with Carmen as written is that it was written in the 19th century and their uh, ideals and their thoughts back then were quite different from what we think and, and feel today. And uh, I truly believe that when the show was written, it was written with the best of intentions and uh, that they were trying to be as forward thinking as they could and as the time allowed them to be. Uh, but it just doesn't quite hold up to where we are today. So my two biggest uh, issues with the show as written are that uh, its treatment of women is not so great, and its treatment of the Romani people uh, is also not so great. So, uh, the first problem I worked backwards from when I was conceiving this production was the treatment of the Romani people. Um, this show deals in a lot of stereotypes of the Romani. Um, they are portrayed as over-sexualized, as uh, smugglers and thieves. So I wanted to sort of put a spin on that that helped relieve some of that uh, stereotype. The way that I got around that for this production is to set it in 1935, which is the beginning of the Spanish Civil War. Um, without going into a long lesson, history lesson about the Spanish Civil War, the first thing that happened in the war was that the Spanish Army, National Army, which was uh, at the time stationed in uh, Northern Africa in order to prevent exactly what was happening in the Civil War, was flown back to Spain and uh, they immediately uh, besieged and bombarded Seville and then took it over and used it as their headquarters for the rest of the, the war. So when you come in, you will see in the first act a, a Seville that is uh, a, a bit war-torn, um, a bit deprived, um, a bit uglier than we would normally expect for a grand opera like this. What that let me do is change the intentions of the smuggling scenes uh, in acts two and three. Um, Rather than being uh, thieves and smuggling contraband, what the, uh, what the Roma are doing in this production is they are smuggling food and weapons into Seville to help try to liberate the city. Um, not to spoil history for you, but it doesn't work. <laughs> and uh, the fascist army under uh, General Franco actually won the Spanish Civil War and Spain was a fascist country until the late 1970s when Franco died. Um, but that, that, just that change in the time allowed me to address that one little section of the show. Um, it also times out really nicely in a lot of different ways that you will see when the show gets to stage. The other big problem is its treatment of women and its treatment of Carmen in particular, um, how uh, she is sort of overly sexualized and how she is um, set upon by men throughout the entire show. And so we've addressed that in a number of different ways, um, in particularly the, the way that uh, the men uh, address her and her reaction to that. Um, I don't want to ruin anything that you're going to see, but um, that was a thing that was very important to me and that I'm finding uh, around when we were rehearsing the production. People really uh, are excited by that and it's an interesting new way of looking at things. Keeping still the score and the, the words and everything that, that is written, just, just moving the intention slightly, we can really re-examine the piece and get a new fresh take on it and, and see it more through Carmen's eyes than through the eyes of the men who are staring at her all of the time. Uh, one of the exciting things about Carmen is the size of the show. Uh, it is a huge production with a, a large chorus. There's a children's chorus. Uh, there are supers. There's a, uh, Car said earlier today in rehearsal, Carmen has all of the things. It has the children, it has the chorus, it has uh, a live gunshot, it has offstage singing, it has all of the things that make opera big and complicated and fun to produce. And I'm very excited to get to uh, try to work with all those elements and put them together into one big cohesive Peace. Hi, I'm Jeff. I'm in the chorus. I sing tenor uh, most days. Uh, I love it. It's a fantastic, fun thing to do. Um, it is, I am not in music in my daily life, so this is a fantastic way for me to plug into the arts in a real and meaningful and lively uh, way. Um, being in the chorus is a fantastic journey. You get to um, be in and amongst 
um, awesome people that are amazing at what they do. It's, it's a serious show, and so this is a really good opportunity to understand how culture has changed over the years um, and how um, we can interpret it or understand their point of view and, and be mindful um, of how we treat other people. Uh, hello, my name is Maxine James. I am a soprano and I sing for the resident company for Opera Idaho. And right now we are doing Carmen. It's very satisfying to uh, learn this difficult music and put it all together, start from the very bottom and to create something really gorgeous. Hi, I'm Andres Tobiasen. I'm one of the members of the chorus and I'm also uh, playing Lilas Pastia in this amazing production, Carmen. I'm super excited. I love Carmen. I've been in a couple, uh, Carmen before and it's one of my favorite operas. The music is just incredible and the drama on stage is, you know, it's kind of to die for, literally. But it's really lots of fun and I really hope you all come and see us on stage. Hi, my name is Katie Walton. I am a part of the resident company here at Opera Idaho. One of the greatest opportunities in Idaho to participate in opera is Opera Idaho. And the good part is that we get to do one of my favorite operas, which is Carmen. Um, it's been an absolute blast for me being a native of Idaho and also being an opera lover. And I hope you all enjoy coming to see it at the end of January.